Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to talk about something fun today, something that I just, I don't know, thought of, something that crossed my mind, and that is handmade custom knives versus CNC small batch customs. I still call these customs. And I want to know your opinion on this. Um, this is a 100% preference-based thing, so I'm not sitting here to say one's better than the other. I'm right, you're wrong. It's none of that. It's just a discussion because I think it's fun. I think there's a lot of guys out there that are on the side of handmade custom knives are the epitome of what a knife collector should be after. And then I think there's people where more on my side of things, I would say this is the side I lean to, where I want the most precision engineered piece of cutlery I can get. And that is really where you're going <clears> to <throat> see the CNC small batch side of things shine, right? Now, there's obviously another category here which is basically Chinese OEM production at a high, high level of CNC precision, right? You have a lot of what's in here in this knife right here. Um, Riot can really dial in a um, production run, right? But this, as amazing as it is, probably some of, one of, if not the best, overall precision engineering you're going to see out of China, right? Even with how good this is, it's not this, right? To me, at least, it's not this. This is another level. Um, and the main reason for that is sheer volume, right? They're pumping out, you know, a couple thousand of these at one time. So you're going to have variants in detents, you're going to have, um, you know, some issues pop up here and there with things. Um, overall, absolutely fantastic. This is one of my favorite knives of, of late. But I just want to mention that because I know people are going to chime in with that. But I wanted to talk about small batch CNC, handmade, and just like, you know, there's nuances um, to the handmade stuff that you don't get with the CNC small batch, right? That's where this shines, is a man, in this case, Greg, from Sparrow Knife Co. spent hundreds of hours working on this particular knife right here to make this for me, right? And um, I actually sent this knife to Jeff, I think, one, two times after I got it um, to further dial it in, and it is literally damn near perfect um there's maybe one thing on this knife that i would try to change if i could and that's just uh due to the way it, you know the lock bar the bolster lock all that kind of stuff it has a little hear that it's like a little bit of a rattle when it taps and it's not a tappy clip clip's fine it, it has nothing to do with that it's just basically i think this lock bar bouncing off of the blade or something or right here when it hits the right angle. That's it, guys. Everything else on this knife is basically perfect. Um, I mean, it's dead nut centered. There's no lash at all. The detent is perfect. I mean, I don't think he could have got this detent better, honestly. Um, the action is insanity. Um, it just feels so good. Now, I have it really tight, so I have to give it a little shake to swing down. and then. But I could loosen it up, and then it would just guillotine down. But that's not what I want. I like having to give it a little bit and let it shake down and listen to that click. Just, oh my God, it's just so good. You can see the transitions here, right? I can catch that lip if I really try. Maybe there's a little gap there, right? Um, this is all hand done. So you have to understand that there's, you know, it's not going to be like it came off a CNC machine. But damn, is it not close. 
The level of detail on this knife that he went to is literally insane to me. Um, I'm so proud of this knife and protective of this knife. I didn't even bring it to Blade Show Texas because I had to fly for fear that you know, it would get lost or stolen or something along the way. And I feel bad because I, I wish I would have. I could have put it out on his table and, and some of you guys who were there could have handled this. And yeah, it's just a knife, but it's also a piece of art. And um, I don't do handmade knives. Like I don't own handmade knives because I'm so fucking picky that it's it's like impossible to check all the boxes for me. Um, Greg was so amazing to work with. And I actually learned a lot from Greg in this process. Um, you know, um, and I, I'm definitely better for it. And I, I know that sounds weird, but um, it, this knife is not going anywhere because I have that, just, there's just this connection with it for me. Um, but anyway, it does knife things incredibly well. It locks up very well. Um, there's no rock. There's no play of any kind. It has an absolutely ridiculously thin hollow ground blade. So this is a hand-done hollow grind, which, by the way, if we look over here, this is also a hand-ground blade. So there is some hand work that goes into finishing these small batch knives obviously so they both have these beautifully thin just oh my god magna cut blades on both this one i think is at uh 63.5 or something like that this one is at 60 to 61 hrc i think he shoots for 61 um i had a whole conversation with craig about that's uh, funny greg and craig I had a whole conversation with Craig about it, and um, he he says that it's optimal where it's at, and he has his reasons for it, and uh, everything he explained to me actually made sense, but I know there's going to be a whole argument of people who are like, nah, it has to be 63, and whatever. I haven't tested it yet. Um, I have used this because it's just such a usable blade, but... Um, I'll keep, you know, cutting with it and, and we'll see um, how the edge retention is and everything. But um, the geometry is fantastic, which I think is going to lend itself to just ha holding a good edge. Um, but anyway, that's really besides the point. Um, although not really. I mean, both of these, because they're small batch in this one and one off in this one, the makers have a lot more control of the heat treat. And they're deciding where to treat it to, right? So this isn't 60-61 because Craig pumps out a thousand of these at once and the heat treater can only do so much, right? Um, no, it's because he chose to go with that. And that's the range he wants to be in and he hit it, right? And then same thing here. So that's a nice difference between these and this because this is being mass produced, thousands of them. So they have to just go with whatever that heat treat place can do, right? And you're gonna have variants. Um, you know, you're gonna have, this is a S90B, which luckily can be treated at, you know, 60, 61 and be perfect basically. Um, but you're gonna have some 59, you know, you're gonna have some 61. And depending on the steel, you know, it can be iffy with that. That's where these are great because they can basically do whatever they want. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so you have little imperfections on stuff like this, right? I mean, there, there's some, you know, you know, you could call it sharp edges or whatever. Although, actually, it's really knocked down everywhere. Um, it's super comfortable in hand. Um, but depending on the handmade knife you have, because I've had probably seven or eight that I've owned and um, I've had a couple that are damn near perfect. This is the closest one to perfect. I mean, it basically is, honestly. Um, you know me, I'm always gonna be able to, to nitpick something and that, that little 
rattle thing is the one thing on this. And that's it. I mean, it just amazes me. But again, the level of detail here, right? Like you have the bark pattern here. You have an inlaid pivot. You have a um, a rock pattern. So you have bark pattern here and then a rock pattern on the flats that translates over to the spine all the way down to the tip. Look at that. That's just incredible, right? You don't get that without hours of work from Greg in the shop. Circuit tie clip, backspacer. Just, man, it, it really, every time I carry this, every time I use this, it, it marvels me. It does. Um, now, I do carry this quite regularly. I mean, I carry it at least once a week, and I use it. You know, when I need to open shit or whatever and it's in pocket, I'm using it. Um, I'm not going to hard use it. If I can't, if I can find something else to use, I will. But um, I definitely use it, you know, um, and I've enjoyed the heck out of it. Now, on this side of things, you have small batch CNC custom. So basically... What these guys are able to do, and another example of this would be like Oz Machine Company, Grimsmo, uh, SPK, uh, you know, there's Koenig, uh, there's a, a bunch of them, right? Um, they can take designs and, I mean, just the precision quality of these is just insane to me. I mean, look at the milling pattern. Right, I'm pretty sure he's turning all his own hardware. Um, at least I've never seen the same hardware on anything else. Custom pivot, right? The tolerances or clearances, whatever you want to call it. I mean, the centering always dead perfect on a brown knife. Lockup is just beautiful. Look at how that flipper tab tucks in here. The blade locks up right here. You always have really cool, um, sort of like, uh, what, what do you call them? Um, like signature type stuff. So like on this knife, if you watch my unboxing and disassembly, there's a, uh, there's a brain in here. So there's like a, you can, uh, let me grab my flashlight and show you. So if you look inside, there's actually like a brain for the Cortex. This is the Cortex XL, by the way. And then it says down there number 002-M, which is um, Magna Cut, right? And then it says XL under the brain. I mean, just, you know, they can do cool stuff like that. Um, on his other models, he has like Blaine Washington and all this stuff underneath the clip, which is gorgeous. Um, but again, there is some handwork done here. You have that hollow grind he does by hand. And did he, did he absolutely kill it on this? Yes. Um, this is my favorite knife, like blade I've ever gotten from Craig. Um, I love the FSD and the FSD mini and everything, but I never had the best experience cutting with them for some reason. Um, and I'm not a sharpener, so I never like tried to put my own edges on them or anything like that. But I think if they just had thicker geometry in general, this one is just super slim and slicey. And, it, man, it cuts so well. And the ergonomics are fantastic. Just absolutely excellent. But, um, you know, they can churn out a good amount of knives with this process and have the quality be top tier across the board like you rarely hear about a bad oz machine company roosevelt koenig areas brown anything spk anything right um you don't hear about bad ones because of how they dial in those processes and then they don't make millions of them right they make hundreds of them this one at a time also why you don't hear about depending on the maker now that's a big thing. That's a big factor on both of these, honestly, I guess, is who's the maker, right? Because you're going to have handmade knives that aren't good. I've handled a bunch. I've done videos on handmade knives and tore them to shreds. Um, I hate, you know, thinking about that. But, um, you know, I used to be more ruthless in my younger years. But, um, 
stuff like this, stuff like what you see from Tough Knives, um, Ray Laconico, um, Wear Knives, right? Uh, these guys are making unbelievably precise and just are pieces of art that are extremely functional, right? Um, and then you, you know, you have other people in this realm that aren't perfect, right? I don't know a bunch offhand and I don't want to sit here and name people that are on that side of things, but so there is some nuance to this, but I guess what I'm getting at is what's your preference? Which one are you going for? Like, let's say money isn't an object. Cause I know a lot of you guys are not spending $1,700 or $850. But let's say you could. Would you go for a balled out custom handmade knife of your picking, right? You can pick materials and stuff like that. That's one of the really cool things over here that I guess I didn't discuss is that when I had this knife made, I got a book spot. I waited, right? Had to wait. And then my book spot came up with Greg, and then we talked about what we were going to do. It was a whole awesome experience talking with Greg and, and shooting ideas back and forth and picking, you know, the, so I got to pick, I wanted a lefty. Did I want a bolster lock or a frame lock? Okay, let's do bolster lock. All right. Um, you obviously, you know, you want titanium bolsters. Yeah, dark titanium bolsters. I'd love to have that kind of tux look. Um, oh, well, you know what would be cool? I'd really love to have this camo style carbon fiber. And I actually used this as an example. Shout out to Bridgeport Knife Co. I used this right here as an example. I don't actually think these are the same. I think this is, that's Black Dunes and this is like camo fat carbon, but they're very similar. But that's where I got the idea. And so I was thinking tux with this carbon fiber. And then, you know, Greg was like, oh, dude, I could do bark pattern on the handle. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I do bark pattern on the handle. And then I was like, I'd love to get some raw Zerkutai in there for a clip and backspacer and maybe the pivot. And he was like, well, I could inlay the carbon fiber in the pivot instead. That would look cool. And I was like, yeah, let's fucking do that. And then, uh, oh, I could do... Um, I could do a uh, rock texture on the flats, right? So you could do belt satin and then do the rock. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. And he's like, it'll run up the spine. And then I said, well, can I get rid of the flipper tab? I don't, I don't really love that big old flipper tab on the Strix. It's cool, um, but I like the way it looks without it. And he said, yeah, well, if we do this rock pattern, then I have to run that up the flipper tab anyway. So you don't get like aggressive jimping. So it's a good finish to then, you know, knock the flipper tab off um, because it'll be a little cleaner and then you have that running down the spine. You know, it was just like this whole awesome process of back and forth and pitching ideas and and literally like imagining this knife and then it came to life, you know? Um, and, you know, there's uh, hardships when it comes to that as well. He had to make this blade twice. Um, because he had uh, some kind of issue when he was setting the lock up and uh, he was like damn I gotta I he's like I could leave it but it was just like too far over and he wasn't comfortable with it so he's like I'm just gonna remake the blade for you so he had to remake the blade before he ever sent me the knife like I'm just saying there's so much that goes into this and that's fun right so maybe you guys are into that or are you into just like you know, the way you could look at it is like, this is like a uh, supercar, right? This is like a Lamborghini, Lamborghini. Why can't I speak? It's like a Lambo. And this is like a custom shop hot rod or something, right? Look at it that way if you want. What's your preference, you know? And, and for me, I think I'm over here for the most part. Um, this knife is an exception. I would love to work with Greg again um, because I think... We know each other uh, fairly well after this process, and I think it would be really fun to do another build with him if I was ever lucky enough to do that again. But other than him, I don't think that handmade custom knives are for me. I just don't think, A, makers want to deal with my bullshit, and B, 
I don't know if I'll ever be fully satisfied. I don't even think, I don't know if anything could get close to this. It's like, I'm that sure of how fucking amazing Greg did on this night. Like, he absolutely crushed that night. Um, just at least based on all of my experience with, with custom knives. I've had some close to this, but damn. So this, for me, is more appealing because it's more likely to strike gold for me, right? These CNC small batches, I think, are just much more likely to strike gold, not not get a lemon or, or whatever, right? Not have issues. So these are like a sweet spot for me. They're expensive, but think about it this way. I spent $700 on a Lefty Evo 4.0 that I got, you can watch my video from last week. And I had to send it back because it was a lemon. It just, it just did not feel right. And that was a $700 Chinese made knife. This is $850, $150 more. And I get one of the best American made companies, brand new design. Just, ah, man, it's just, awesome and you still get a little taste of that connection with the maker right like I, i've talked to craig i've asked questions about the knife and the heat treat and all that kind of shit and we've talked and so there is some level of that connection that you have right this is full blown this is zero right i mean sure you can hit up brian Ado, he's a great dude um but you're not gonna like have the same level of connection that you would with this for sure or even this right and then if you talk about something like this just a you know this is a chinese made katuo ventner this is a great knife by the way it needs a clip but it's a great design great knife but you don't have any of that connection that you have here right like this is a good company and everything but i don't know the person who put their hands on this and made this knife you know what I mean? I, I can't ask the guy why his 14C is at whatever and get, you know, a personable response, right? Oh, I can't say, well, it's just a touch off center, you know, and then be able to send that back and have them do whatever to fix it, even though I'm sure their customer service would try to help. You get my point. So it's just another, it's just a whole nother animal. All right, so my uh, camera, which is an iPhone 12 Pro that I bought just to use as a camera, it just overheated and it's giving me the temperature thing, which is really weird because I'm just in my office. Anyway, I'm hoping it still saved that video to where it turned off because I luckily was looking at the screen. So hopefully it will. But I want to talk about, I wanted to bring out two other knives. Um, this one and this one. This is a uh, Trevor Burger Urban Custom. This is custom number 001 Urban. Um, and this is a small batch CNC custom knife, much like this. And this is the Trevor Burger EXK30 slip joint. And I don't know how much CNC goes into this and how much this is a handmade knife. I think maybe the scales and the liners and everything are cut CNC. But, I mean, there has to be a lot of handwork here, right? Because he's pinning everything. Um, they're not screwed together. That, I believe, would take handwork. Um, and then, obviously, you have these. I believe they're hand, they have to be hand-finished, hand-satins. Um, so I think this kind of has both realms in it, right? Um, this one is more on par with the, uh, Cortex XL, but these are just two other examples that I have. Um, and that's really it for, for me personally in my collection. I don't have a ton of these small batch CNC custom or handmade at all, right? Um, and that's mostly due to the fact that I just don't keep things super long term. And I, 
I guess I just don't like having that much money tied up and stuff. And that's where, that's where we end up at the Chinese OEM stuff, right? Because it's less of an investment and assuming you get a good one, which happens a lot, you get a lot for your money. I mean, this was 325 and it's, you know, uh, definitely one of the better knives you can get, you know? Um, but when I can support USA, of course I will, right? That's a whole nother conversation. I guess I should be careful. Um, I don't have an issue with China because I obviously I use Chinese OEMs with my brand because I can't make knives. Um, so, you know, I, I get the argument for all of it. And that wasn't the point of this. Anyway, I just wanted to show these Trevor Burgers. This is probably the longest tenured knife in my collection. Um, I've had this for at least two, maybe three years. And I, I don't foresee me letting it go or anything. I love this knife to death. Um, this I just recently got from Trevor on sort of a pre-order and absolutely love this now this did have a little issue um it was wrapping so this has a kick so that kick is supposed to stop the blade from touching the spring but it wasn't doing that so i had to have it sharpen um and my guy Corey dunlap sharpened it twice and it seems like he got it out because i've been carrying using opening and closing this thing probably been opened a few hundred times since and the edge is still good to go so i think we're good now but uh yeah so just a couple other examples uh the phone is good so let's check let's see if we lost that footage no we got 22 minutes of it awesome so yeah let me know your thoughts on this uh i just i guess the question that I'm posing is what, what are you, what's your style? What do you prefer? Um, what do you collect? What is, if money was no object, object, what would be your, um, category? You know, cause some of you guys are going to say, well, I only spent a hundred bucks tops on a knife, so I'm not going to get something like this or this, Right. But let's say money wasn't an object, would you be a this guy or a that guy, right? Or maybe you're just a this guy. That's what you prefer, that's what you want. Or maybe you're a this guy, right? You're a $50 knife guy. And that's, your, that's what you like, that's what you love, that's what you're comfortable with. Even if you had all the money in the world, you wouldn't spend this much money. Totally understand that as well, right? Um, as I was saying earlier, I try to limit how much I do that, but it, it all is relative to me, right? Like right now I have more of the small batch CNC custom flashlights than I do um, knives, right? Like I said, I really only have the, uh, the Cortex XL the Burger Urban, and then uh, if you want to count this, I think it would count in that category. Um, but with flashlights, I have uh, five CWF customs. I have five Hanko customs. Um, you combine all that together. I mean, the Hankos are 800 bucks a piece. They're right there at this range. So it's not that I won't spend it. It's just where I'm putting that money, what I'm into at the moment. You know what I mean? It's just kind of how it goes. And as of late, this category hasn't been like enticing me as much until this knife came out. Um, you know, I was all over that category for a while. You know, I had Rasks, I had Roosevelt's, uh, you know. Um, I guess that's the thing. There's just not a ton in that category. Um, not a big SPK guy because they haven't been on bearings, but now they are. So I, I might want to try one again on bearings, but I think he's making a lefty. So I'd be interested in that for sure. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to shut up. I think I've, 
I've rambled. I don't even know if I had a point and if I got to it, great. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's really it. Let's just put these two back out. And, uh, the question is handmade custom or CNC small batch, your choice. Let me know and let me know why that's it. That's what I'm asking. Um, and I'm going to shut up now. So there's some rambles for you. Just talking to talk. Um, Feel free to rip me in the comments for anything I said. And uh, most importantly, I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And uh, I'll catch you later. Peace.